Okay, so for this tutorial, we're gonna look at 10 tips that I wish I knew when I first started Illustrator. Okay, starting with artboards. Artboards are a great feature within Illustrator. On the surface, they're essentially the working area for your document. So like for instance, HD, which is 1920 by 1080 or like A4 for print. My approach to design is quite non-destructive. I try to keep a lot of the content that I create on side, just in case I have to refer back to it. By using artboards, I'm able to create duplicate versions of a design. The easiest way to create a duplicate is to go to the artboard tool within the tool panel or by pressing shift O. Once you're on the artboard tool, you click the canvas and by pressing alt and shift, you can drag out the artboard depending on the direction you're trying to lay it out in. By pressing shift, it allows you to keep the alignment in either vertical or horizontal. Um, if you don't press shift, you are able to just drag the artboard out. Tip number two, the shape builder tool. The shape builder tool is probably one of the most powerful tools within Illustrator as you are able to really develop shapes organically using what is essentially a simplified version of the Pathfinder tool. You are able to select a variety of shapes together and using the tool, just join them by clicking on them and just dragging through the selection of shapes. To access the shape builder, you can even find it in the tool panel or by pressing shift and M, uh, it opens up the tool, which looks like a regular arrowhead. So you just select the shapes you want to work with and you will notice that the cursor changes. So on default, it will have a plus, which means you're joining shapes together. But if you press alt, you can actually remove shapes. I personally find this to be very beneficial when creating logos or shapes that require negative space, as you can plan for that within your initial drawings or designs, and then you can quite easily remove shapes as opposed to using the traditional Pathfinder tool and having to manually select and remove different points. As this tool is quite destructive, um, I would recommend creating backups or different artboards with the item that you're working on so that you can go back to anything in case you accidentally uh, join or delete the wrong element. Tip number three, creating guides. Many people use rulers to create guides. However, I find that to create an initial guide, the easiest way is to use a single rectangular shape and actually split it into a regular repeated grid. Initially, my approach was to use a single square and repeat it vertically and horizontally by manually duplicating it. However, this was quite time consuming and didn't always lead to accurate results. The easiest approach is to create a grid that's the same size as your canvas and then use the options uh, split into grid, which is found within object, path, and then split into grid uh, to divvy up the shape into the grid of your choosing. Once the grid has been built, you can select all the objects, right click and select make guides. These guides will effectively work as rulers so you can snap to points and make sure everything aligns. Tip number four, using custom preferences to enhance your workflow. Within Illustrator, many find it easier to change up certain settings to allow you to really adapt the workflow into your own. I've adjusted quite a few settings, including the tracking and leading points as they're done to quite random increments. One of the most useful settings is to change the handle type as it allows you to have more control when sizing and playing with paths. On default, this is set to the smallest setting when in reality, most people prefer working at quite a larger handle size as you have more control. Tip number five, stacking fills and strokes on a selected item. Within the appearance panel, you can actually add multiple strokes or fills to a single object. Where these attributes are being added to a single object or line, you can stack them on top of each other to create interesting visual features like distortions, drop shadows, or strokes. This can be a good non-destructive way to add definition to typography and still have it being editable. Tip number six, the color changer. I've been using Illustrator for quite a while and this tool kind of slipped under the radar for quite a while. 
the adjust color setting allows you to change an artboard's color scheme. You are able to change the color scheme depending on what you're working on. So if it's RGB, CMYK, or just a global color change. Although this setting is used as a color balancer, it can be used as much more. I personally use it as a hue slider as you can change an artboard's color scheme. Tip number seven, using the right live tracing settings for your document. Many designers use live tracing to vectorize sketches or photography or really any asset to use within Illustrator. The main considerations will be the input and the output. The input meaning how noisy or the quality of the image and the output being the style of artwork you want to create. Noisier images will require more of a finesse, especially looking at the denoising settings and the depth of color. Black and white sketches can be achieved quite well using remove white from the image. This will mean that your final vector outcome will only have the shaded elements and no white background. Tip number eight, looking at blending. Blending within Illustrator has a number of interesting outcomes. You can use it to create object tweens, 3D gradients on a path, or even blended text. To access the blend settings, firstly select two or more objects you want to blend together, then go to Object, Blend, and then Make. Once the blend has been applied, you can go back and refine the way it looks. I personally prefer to use the step settings rather than distance or smooth color as you have more control on the outcome but be aware that this effect is quite intensive when working with higher step counts. Tip number nine is looking at mesh distortion. When working with vectors, trying to get a smooth liquid distortion look can be quite difficult to achieve organically. I find that using an enveloped distortion with a mesh to work quite well to achieve this effect as you are able to drag out and really play with the shapes. This tool essentially adds a grid on top of your design and allows you to interact with certain points. This tool is quite beneficial as it allows you to still have the original artwork intact while having these effects on top. The mesh distortion kind of acts a bit like a liquefier tool within Photoshop as you're able to drag things out and create really interesting and organic shapes. Tip number 10, using shortcuts. Working with shortcuts is the most beneficial way to work within Illustrator and pretty much all design software. When you know what you're trying to achieve and you don't have to navigate through menus, you are actually able to focus solidly onto the design at hand. I find that shortcuts allow me to speed up my workflow. I wouldn't recommend memorizing the entire shortcut list, but memorizing the things that you use on a frequent basis is a good start. I would recommend looking into transformation settings, the tools themselves and key distortion or effects that you use on a frequent basis. Once you become comfortable with shortcuts, I highly recommend making custom shortcuts for settings that you frequently use that may not be listed. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more future content. Thank you.